Blue Man Hamadi, a California father of two, Maude Marin, mother of four, education activist, advocate rather, and New York congressional candidate, and Nicole Solas, a Rhode Island mother and Education Freedom Center fellow, join me now to discuss. Good morning to you all. Dr. Hamadi, what's going on here? When you think about merit, that means that you have an ability to do something good because of a certain personal skill set that you have. How could that be rooted in whiteness? You know, look, I think at this moment, everyone in the public school system in Los Angeles, in California in general, here in my own district in Santa Monica and Malibu uh, in California, is trying to make everything about race and is trying to dumb things down in this twisted, actual racist mentality that people of racial minorities somehow can't perform. And therefore, everything has to be dumbed down in order to not offend people. That anti-racist mentality actually is as racist as you can possibly get because basically it's telling people who are not white, you're less capable. Uh, I came as an immigrant, as a young child from Iran, not speaking any English. And the first school I went to that was not used to seeing any immigrants put me in the lowest group of everything and told my parents, I'm not capable of doing well in school. My parents said, no way. And they challenged them pushed me, got me tutors, taught me themselves, and I came back to school and I was at the top of the class, only because we challenged them. When you go and tell kids in school and teachers that kids can only learn based on the color of their skin, it throws everything off and it only perpetuates these divisions in education that we're trying to fight. That's absolutely right. So well said. And Nicole, if you think about it, school is a merit-based system. Students are supposed to study, they, they take tests, and they get graded accordingly. So if you remove merit from school, what's the point? What happens to our students? Well, they're indoctrinated into this political ideology. You know, whiteness is a pseudoscientific conspiracy theory that the school is repackaging as something academic when, when it's not. We want our kids to succeed on their individual merit, not fail with a collective. And I believe that that people that are teaching this fake concept of whiteness are teaching that because they, they can't teach anything else. They, they're actually not qualified or capable of teaching mathematics or literature. And so they fall back on teaching political ideology because it's much easier to manipulate vulnerable minds than it is to actually teach them something that they can use when they're adults. And Maude, the man who's teaching this course, that by the way, every Los Angeles um, public school uh, teacher has to take, he says that you can't teach based on merit because not every racial group is given the same opportunity. What's your response to that? As has already been said here this morning, that's really racist. Um, and, you know, I'm here in New York City. We've seen these same terrible ideas um, in New York City. It doesn't help any child perform better, learn more, do better in life. And it actually really holds um, students back and instills in them really, really terrible ideas that parents everywhere don't want their children being taught. So we as parents, you know, it's like a game of whack-a-mole. These bad ideas pop up in one school district and parents have to chase them away, but then you blink and they've popped up in another school district. And we have to get back to a time where schools actually know what their role is, which is to teach our children um, basic skills and real knowledge and not these pseudoscientific ideas, as Nicole correctly calls them. Well, Dr. Hamadi, the other thing this training course is teaching, and th this is a real gem, they say the statement, everyone can succeed in the society if they work hard enough. They say that statement is a myth. So rather than teaching students that if you work hard, you can achieve your dreams, they're saying, don't even bother. And what does this set people up for? It sets people up for failure. It creates a lack of hope. That lack of hope translates into poor academic performance, translates into lack of college education, lack of jobs, and ultimately poverty. And it creates, it perpetuates this vicious cycle of poverty. And like I said before, this is actually at the very root of racism. If you look back into the 80s and 90s, our educational philosophy here in Los Angeles was exactly the opposite. We praised the teachers like Jaime Escalante, who was the subject of that Oscar-nominated film in 1989, Stand and Deliver, who said, you know what, my poor Hispanic students in this East L.A. school 
are going to take AP calculus and they're going to pass. And guess what he did against all odds? He got that group of students to do exceptionally well, despite the fact that they faced a lot of challenges. Yeah. Nowadays, it's exactly the opposite. We try to tell teachers, don't challenge your students, especially if they're racial minorities. And if we're ever going to try to change these, these learning gaps and, and get people to be actually all on the same level, achieve the very same racial equity that these people claim to strive for, the way to do it is through education. It's through challenging them, not by telling them you can't achieve. Absolutely. Dr. Human Hamadi, Maud Mayer, and Nicole Salas, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. We so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome.